Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Abraham Lincoln, the Gettysburg Address These words came from a man who had experienced personal loss, fought to keep his country together as it became divided apart, and then, in the midst of the bloodiest conflict in American history, took a major step in abolishing the very institution that drove the country apart, slavery. Abraham Lincoln is often considered one of the best presidents in the history of the United States, so let's see how this man with a humble background became an American martyr. Welcome back to RAC's Presidential Park series, where we take a look at the leaders of the United States, through the parks that they governed, and the ones that served to honor them. Here we go! Abraham Lincoln was born in 1809 in a one-room log cabin in Kentucky, a rugged beginning for a man who would eventually go on to helm the nation. Deep in the Kentucky frontier lies Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Historical Park, with a memorial protecting the president's place of birth. After living in Kentucky for a few years, the Lincoln family faced a lawsuit against their farm and were forced to vacate the property, choosing to move to southern Indiana, where Lincoln would spend most of his childhood. The Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial commemorates this period in Lincoln's life, and it was in this period that Lincoln would grow a lot, not just physically, but intellectually. He worked the fields, but did not take to hunting game, and in 1818, his mother, Nancy Hanks Lincoln, passed sending Lincoln into one of the saddest periods of his life. Though this loss would help prepare him to be caring and resolute during the darkest times of his presidency many years later. During his childhood, Lincoln also gained an interest in reading, poring over such books as Robinson Crusoe, Aesop's Fables, and the Bible. And it was this interest in reading and learning that he would carry with them as their family moved again, this time to the state of Illinois. By this time, Lincoln had become an aspiring young man and was ready to go out into the world. Trying his hand at several trades, including rail splitting, a job that he would be made famous for as his portrayal of being a hard worker during his presidential campaign, Lincoln eventually decided to go into the practice of law, starting in 1836. In 1837, Lincoln found a home in the new state capital of Springfield, and would live in Springfield until his presidency. In Springfield, Lincoln's home remains restored and preserved as Lincoln Home National Historic Site, which gives an insight into how Lincoln lived during his time in Springfield, and where he found his wife Mary Todd after having some unsuccessful romantic ventures earlier in life. Lincoln would go on to have four children with Mary Todd, though only one, Robert Todd Lincoln, would go on to see adulthood. While Lincoln was a lawyer, he also served in the Illinois House of Representatives for several terms in the 1830s and early 40s. Eventually, he would make his way onto the national scene in 1843, running for the U.S. House of Representatives and getting defeated, but winning in 1847. It was here where Lincoln met the full force of the ongoing argument about the forced labor of African Americans without recompensation, or, as you might know it, slavery. Lincoln spent a term in the House before taking a step back until 1854, when the divisive Kansas-Nebraska Act, letting the people in the Western Territories choose if they would permit slavery or not, forced Lincoln back into the political conversation. A man by the name of Stephen Douglas was behind this bill, and Lincoln was determined to get Mr. Douglas's seat in the Senate, challenging him as a member of the Republican Party in 1858. Although Lincoln lost the election, a series of debates which came to be known as the Lincoln-Douglas debates showcased the orating strengths of the two men. It was the final step in pushing him towards being a candidate in the presidential election of 1860. After being nominated by the Republican Party, Lincoln chose to leave behind his law practice he had begun so long ago and focus all of his efforts on becoming president of the United States. The nation was practically ripping itself apart, and out of the four candidates running, Lincoln managed to obtain the most votes, becoming the nation's 16th president. However, southern pro-slavery states had had enough. In December of 1860, South Carolina seceded from the United States and six states followed to form the Confederate States of America. By April of 1861, all eyes were on a small fort guarded by Union troops in Charleston Harbor, South Carolina. The name of this place? Fort Sumter. On April 12, 1861, Confederate troops fired on the fort, and thus let loose half a century of frustration through politics and the people. Fort Sumter and Fort Moultrie National Historical Park remembers this tragic event, and shows the time-battered fort to visitors today. Now, there are plenty of sites associated with America's bloodiest war, enough to war in a series of its own, but today we're going to focus on a couple that have ties to Lincoln directly. Perhaps there is no site more connected and more relevant to Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War than Gettysburg National Military Park in Pennsylvania. In 1863, the war had been going on for two violent years, a far cry from what many had predicted to be an easy, quick war. In July of that year, the two forces clashed in the small town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where the Union Army managed to halt and reverse a Confederate invasion of the northern states, a major turning point in the war, but also one of the largest and highest casualty battles. In November, President Lincoln traveled to the battlefield to dedicate a cemetery for those who had died during the conflict. The speaker preceding Lincoln gave a two-hour speech, and then Lincoln came up to speak. Although the delivery of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address was only two minutes in length, it contained some of the most powerful prose in American history. 
A link to the address will be included in the description below if you have not had the chance to read this document before. Despite the war, in 1864, Lincoln made a stride towards preserving natural areas when he set aside a portion of the Yosemite Valley in California and gave it to the state as a place for recreation and enjoyment. Just over 25 years later, Yosemite would enter into the federal system as one of the first national parks. As the war drew to a close, the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia was seen as the last major goal for the Union, who in the two years since Gettysburg had made massive gains despite being stuck in sieges for several months on several fronts. General Ulysses S. Grant captured the city in early April 1865, nearly four years after the opening battle at Fort Sumter. Lincoln would visit the city with his son Tad just two days after its fall and walk through the White House of the Confederacy. Richmond National Battlefield Park, split into several units, chronicles the final stages of the Civil War and the fall of the almighty Virginian city. On the evening of April 14th, Lincoln went to go see a play, Our American Cousin in Ford's Theater in the nation's capital. During the play, a Southern sympathizer and actor named John Wilkes Booth snuck into the private box where Lincoln was sitting, waited for a punchline that would cause laughter from the audience, and then did the unthinkable. President Lincoln was shot that night, and would die the next morning, the first president to be killed by an assassin. Ford's Theater is now a National Historic Site, where people can reflect on this dark moment in American history. The Lincoln assassination was part of a larger plot to take out Vice President Andrew Johnson, Secretary of State William Seward, and General Ulysses Grant. But Johnson's drunken killer talked himself out of the plan. Seward was seriously stabbed, but survived, and Grant left Washington before the day of the murder. Andrew Johnson would become the 17th President of the United States after Lincoln's passing, and we will discuss him in the next video in the series. Unfortunately for Lincoln, his greatest efforts would not be realized until after he passed. During the war, Lincoln had issued an Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all those in the Confederacy who were enslaved. And in January of 1865, the 13th Amendment passed through Congress, officially abolishing slavery. It was not until December of that year, though, that Lincoln's goals were finally seen through, when the amendment was ratified by the states, and it would be almost a century before African Americans were truly able to get civil rights in the United States. So how is Lincoln remembered? Many states pay tribute to him. Illinois is known as the land of Lincoln. Nebraska's capital is named after the president. And numerous counties and schools are named in his honor. Two national park units pay tribute to him directly. Mount Rushmore National Memorial, who along with George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, see cards above, as well as Theodore Roosevelt honors the 16th president and the dedication he had to his country, and the Lincoln Memorial, built in the early 1900s as a lasting monument to one of America's most recognizable and accomplished presidents. Robert Todd Lincoln, the only surviving Lincoln son, made his last public appearance at the dedication of the memorial before passing in 1926. The Rail Splitter The Great Emancipator Honest Abe Whoever you know him as, Abraham Lincoln is a president with a legacy matched by few others over the years. From a Kentucky cabin to the White House, Lincoln's journey serves as an inspiration to all Americans and to everyone around the world, and the National Park Service traces this journey every step of the way to observe this man and what he stood for. And as Lincoln reminded the American people in one of their darkest hours on a November day, that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Thanks for watching.